Chandan, will you share your screen for a trial? Hello, Chandan. Hello. Uh, yeah, this so what shall I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah start. We will start. Uh, it's uh, dot three PM. So, uh, very good afternoon and welcome all to the fourth and final day of the national webinar on discipline specific elective topics of UG Chemistry Honors CBCS syllabus of the University of Calcutta. Uh, for the new participants who have joined us today, uh, I am Dr. Rajunta Mukherjee uh, from the Department of Chemistry, Moulana Azad College, and the joint convener of the webinar. On behalf of the organizing committee, I welcome you all to the four days lectures on two very important DSE topics uh, on green chemistry and chemistry of natural products and dissertation. We have so far completed five DSE topics on the previous three days. With this very brief introduction, I would like to request Professor Choitani Mukhopadhyay Chairperson of the UG Board of Studies of Chemistry, University of Calcutta, to kindly introduce the technical session. Madam, please. Ah, thank you. Good afternoon. So today is it's going to be the grand finale of this four-day national webinar on DSC topics. Uh, so far, it's going very smoothly, and thanks to Ajanta and Aya and the other teams behind the scene. <coughs> And uh, today you are going to hear another two uh, discussion over, over another two DSEs. The first one will be the, uh, given by Dr. Shonjai Bhar of Jadapur University on Green Chemistry. And the second one will be on dissertation by Priyotosh, I think. So uh, without any further words, I'd welcome Dr. Bhar to start his session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. We will now begin the technical session with Dr. Kea Ghosh, Head of the Department of Chemistry, Ashutosh College, and the joint convener of the webinar as the chairperson of this session. Dr. Kea Ghosh. Uh, so, very good afternoon, uh, uh, respected uh, uh, chairman, uh, Professor Chuitali Mukhopadhyay. Uh, chairman of EGBOS, uh, Department of Chemistry, University of Calcutta. I am very much grateful to her uh, because for this long four-day national uh, uh, webinar, uh, she was always with us uh, uh, and uh, she has enriched us in every moment with her valuable suggestion and uh, valuable guidance. And being a chairman of the uh, EGBOS, uh, it uh, really matters a lot uh, for us. Uh, uh, so thank you, Choitaridi. Uh, next, uh, respected uh, um, audience, respected uh, teachers, and behind the meeting room, uh, our dear students, um, uh, we are on the fourth day, and uh, after the uh, we after today's uh, lecture, uh, we will discuss a lot. Uh, so we should not delay because we are very eagerly uh, waiting for uh, Shonjada's lecture uh, because uh, we are uh, ready to get uh, uh, his knowledge from every nook and corner. We know Shonjada very much. Uh, Shonjada is professor of Department of Chemistry of Jadapur University. Actually, he is uh, uh, such a person, uh, as uh, I can say, uh, from my very uh, um, uh, own uh, idea that uh, he is always in active mode of teaching learning process. Uh, that's why uh, 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 his, uh, sub his topic is green chemistry and chemistry of natural product. Uh, one thing I should say, uh, the subject green chemistry 
really goes uh, with uh, Dr. Shonjai Bhar, uh, who is absolutely green. Uh, and uh, green chemistry means sustainable chemistry. And uh, he is so down to earth. Uh, so, Shonjai Da, our very own Shonjai Da, uh, uh, will uh, give uh, his lecture and share his uh, knowledge. And the question answer session will be conducted by Dr. Shuparna Pal and Dr. Urijit Kundu. And uh, Shonjai the first uh, told me uh, in the very mo early morning uh, that uh, he uh, will take uh, more than the scheduled time. And I told that it is uh, our big advantage. Uh, I we should not stop you. So you just give and give your knowledge to us. Uh, so thank you, Shonjai the. We are very happy to get you uh, in, on the screen and uh, please, uh, Dr. Shanjepur. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Can you see the screen? What the title of the talk is there? Yes, yes. Okay. So, very good afternoon to everybody. Uh, let me thank Prof. Chaitali Mukhopadhyay, the chairperson of the UGBS of the University of Calcutta, uh, Dr. Rajanta Mukherjee and Dr. Kia Ghosh for their kind invitations. They are the conveners of this four-day-long webinar. And also, secondly, I must thank Kia, Dr. Kia Ghosh again for kind words of introduction. I do not know how much I am eligible to accept all these things, but thank you, Dr. Kia Ghosh, for the nice words you have spoken about me. So, thank today, you. what I have uh, planned to talk in front of you is uh, my thoughts on the teaching of green chemistry. I have been teaching this subject in the PhD coursework program and also in the postgraduate level uh, for, say, more than seven or eight years at Jadupur University. But this is the first year I have taught this at the UG level. And I have uh, seen some problems among the students while percolating the concepts uh, of green chemistry among them. So let me move on with this figure. This is 15274. This number, this figure, bears a very tragic connotation with respect to our own country because this is the number of people officially announced who were victimized in the Bhupal tragedy during December 2nd and 3rd in the year 1984. Am I clearly audible? Uh, yes, please hide the bottom line. Shanjada, please hide the bottom line, please. Okay. okay. Yeah, uh, uh, and uh, yeah. can you make the screen bigger? I don't know. No. It, it is in the full no, screen. No. It's okay, in the full okay. screen. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, uh, okay. carry on, please. Okay. After this Bhopal tragedy, the people all over the world, they began to think to practice chemistry in an alternative manner so that it creates less harm to the surroundings. Out of that pursuit, green chemistry came out with an objective to prevent pollution sustaining the earth. This is also called as benign by design chemistry, benign by design. I shall come to later on what is meant by this benign by design. Green chemistry and technology, they are indispensable for the survival of our future generation. Chemists must pass to practical elegance. Chemical synthesis must be intellectually logical and technically efficient. This is not written by me. This has been said by none other than Professor Roy G. Noiri, who got Nobel Prize, all of you know, in 2001, along with Knowles and Sapless. What is green chemistry? At the bottom of the slide, you can find a reference. Green chemistry, theory and practice by Paul Anastas and John Warner. That is the pioneering book on this topic. This book is also available in our country nowadays. In that book, the definition of green chemistry has been put forward by Paul Anastas and John Warner. Needless to say to this audience, Paul Anastas is considered to be the father of green chemistry. He has actually coined this term. Green chemistry is the utilization of a set of principles 
that reduces or eliminates the use or generation of hazardous substances in the design manufacture and application of chemical products this is the definition which has been put forward by paul anastas and john warner in that book green chemistry theory and practice in short what is green chemistry about green chemistry is about waste minimization at source use of catalysts in place of reagents using non toxic reagents use of renewable resources improved atom efficiency use of solvent free or recyclable environmentally benign solvent systems these are some important aspects of green chemistry this is a very vast subject actually and see the topic which is supposed to be covered in 52 lectures of each one hour duration it is quite difficult to justice on the vastness of this subject within within the short time of 30 minutes anyway let me move green chemistry is about reducing it talks to reduce it talks of reductionism it talks to reduce waste it talks to reduce minerals hazard risk energy environmental impact and most important factor in this pursuit is cost whenever any scheme any system is to be implemented in a broader perspective cost effectiveness is a big issue in the pursuit of green chemistry if the process involves huge amount of cost then it will not be acceptable to the greater mass so it is very important now when we talk in green chemistry in front of the students generally in organic chemistry classes what we do we discuss some reactions we discuss some mechanisms geochemical aspects all this sort of analytical and intellectual exercises in case of green chemistry the subject becomes a little bit narrative so after spending two or three classes the students try, begin to feel bored that boredom should not come onto the student it is the responsibility of the teacher so that this boredom because the approach is different this boredom should not come down to the students that should not engulf the students otherwise they will lose interest this is the problem i have noticed among the undergraduate students i did not notice this problem among the post graduate students who are a little bit advanced and more exposed towards this issue now these are some aspects of green chemistry safer re reactions and reagents separation process i am moving in the anti clockwise fashion for a particular reason separation processes energy efficiency process intensification waste minimization use of renewable fit stocks solvent replacement and then i am coming to a very important aspect catalysis these all factors they interplay when something in green chemistry that is being developed 12 principles of green chemistry which have been proposed by put forward by paul anastas and john warner they have been accepted as it is by united state environmental protection agency i have seen in your syllabus in all the syllabus syllabi of green chemistry 12 principles of green chemistry they are to be discussed all these things are available in any book of green chemistry i shall suggest some books at the end of my talk but in any book of green chemistry in any uh, what i should say the internet information you will find this 12 principles so there are 12 principles as the united states environmental protection agency has accepted i am listing it down in a different connotation prevent waste you will see in that book it is later it is written over there it is better to prevent waste than to process it after it is formed that is the first principle 
yes it is written there as prevent to us design safer chemicals and products design less hazardous chemical synthesis use renewable fit stocks that means the synthetic process should involve less hazard if possible no hazard i shall come to such example in the discussion of laboratory experiment use of renewable fit stocks the resources which are being used for the process they should be recycled as much as practicable use catalysts not stoichiometric reagent because that is reduce the extent of waste avoid chemical derivatives that will increase the number of steps you have to minimize the number of steps maximize atomic economy i shall highlight this point a little bit more than other topics use safer solvents and reaction conditions increase energy efficiency design chemicals and products to degrade after use very important if the products they are residing in the our environment that will create a huge amount of damage actually this uh, environmental protection movement it started from from the book of rachel carson the silent spring where she has highlighted the menace of synthetic chemicals towards our surroundings towards our environment and in that book she dedicated a particular chapter towards the nuisance of ddt which was at one time called as elixir of life by winston churchill when it was discovered first and app used analyze in real time to prevent pollution minimize the potential for accident very very important point minimize the potential for accidents i shall come to an experiment which is to be done in the laboratory which actually minimizes this potential for accident these two areas in the book of anastas and williamson this is the book which was published after the book of anastas and warner in this book you will find number of examples the mostly in the book of anastas and warner theory and practices in your syllabus it is written as theory and practical it is actually theory and practice green chemistry theory and practice in that book simply the philosophy of the subject has been discussed but here many examples many many examples have been included in this book anastas and williamson in this book of anastas and williamson the authors have highlighted two very important issues in green chemistry one is atom economy foundation of the principle foundation of the principles of green chemistry and the second is catalysis fundamental area of investigation these two important areas are to be discussed when one discusses green chemistry in front of any audience now let us come to the measures of reaction efficiency one we know very well that is yield what is yield actual quantity of the product achieved by theoretical quantity of the product achievable following the stoichiometric equation into 100 that gives you the percentage and that is being practiced from the very beginning of our uh, learning process in chemistry probably from the uh, from class 8 or class 9 another factor is that this is selectivity what is selectivity that is different from yield the selectivity is yield of the desired product by amount of the substrate converted how much of substrate has been converted and how much amount of desired product has been obtained third point is atomic economy this is relative molecular mass of the desired product divided by relative molecular mass of all reactants and that concept of atomic economy was proposed by barry trost this relative molecular mass of desired product by relative molecular mass of all reactants this ratio if the ratio is high then it implies most of the atoms on the reactant sides they have been incorporated in the desired product naturally the form extent of waste by product that is less so this is very important aspect of green chemistry let us let me show you how to calculate atom economy for a single step process 
This is a single step process where A and B reacts to give C. You take molecular weight of the product at the numerator and then molecular summation of the molecular weight of A and molecular weight of B at the denominator. But when calculating atomic autonomy, stoichiometry of reactants and products, they must be considered because from there you can ha have the idea of the number of atoms on the reactant side and then you can assess to which extent they have been incorporated in the desired product. A concrete example, this is an industrial process for the preparation of malic anhydride from benzene using vanadium catalyst. That does not come into the picture. Just I have shown the balanced chemical equation and the equation has been balanced in some unconventional way, putting a fractional coefficient, stoichiometric coefficient to one of the reactants. This has been done only to keep the stoichiometric coefficient of the desired product as one. In this equation, you can simply find the expression, 90 is the molecular weight of this malic anhydride, then comes 78 from benzene and 4.5 multiplied with 32 the molecular weight of oxygen then comes 144 and the atom economy of this process comes out to be 44.1 percent that is not very high why because you can see some atoms carbon at more atom more number of atoms they are lost in the formation of byproducts like carbon dioxide and water a very important thing about atom economy this is aldol condensation followed by dehydration. You see very simple reaction between benzaldehyde and acetophenone that gives you the cholcom. This is a balanced chemical equation, the first one, which is written in dark red. You see the atom economy has been calculated as 92.035. In the second case, the same aldol condensation has been done with a different substrate and with different stoichiometric proportion of benzaldehyde. Here, the atom economy is less. So, atom economy of a particular reaction, it cannot be said exactly unless and until the atom economy value is 100. If the atom economy value is 100, then and only then you can say, that the atom economy of the process is 100. But in this process, in the same reaction, the same thing, but depending on the nature of substrates, the atom economy changes. That is very important. One cannot say that the atom economy of the aldol condensation followed by dehydration is 92%. One cannot say atom economy of aldol condensation followed by dehydration is 86.67%. No. Depending on the nature of substrate, depending on the reactions, the stoichiometry, the atom economy changes. It remains fixed only in case of the processes where the atom economy is 100%. The examples are electrocyclic reaction, Bell-Sala reaction, pericy mostly pericyclic reaction, excluding electropic extrusion, rearrangements, etc. Now, this atom economy, it gives you a measure of the extent of incorporation of the atoms on the reactant side to the product. But mere satisfying atom economy does not guarantee greenness of a process. If this process, which has got 92% atom economy, is carried out in a toxic solvent benzene, more important examples for plus two cycle addition reactions, which are often carried out in refluxing benzene. Although the atom economy is 100%, you cannot call that particular process green because that involves a toxic and carcinogenic solvent. So mere satisfying atom economy criteria does not warrant the process to be green. One must remember this point. Now, difference between yield and atom economy. This is the example of Fry's rearrangement. Actually, this reaction I have done many times during my pre-doc career in the laboratory of organic chemistry of Indian, Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. And Dr. Ghosh probably knows how messy the reaction is. The atom economy of the process is 
हंड्रेड परसेंट इल्ड इज मैक्सिमम इल्ड हुई चाय है बॉक्स टेंड इज थर्टी फाइव ऑफन इट वेन डाउन टू थर्टी फाइव बिकॉज़ एट द एंड ऑफ़ द प्रोसेस व्हेन द इंटर रिएक्शन मिक्सचर इज़ वर्क्ड अप एंड देन द प्रोडक्ट इज़ डिस्टिल्ड आउट फ्रॉम द सिस्टम द ऑर्थोहाइड्रोक्सिड � in the distillation flask this process has got 100% atomic on of 100% atomic economy but this process cannot be called as green because it forms huge amount of byproduct what is the difference atomic economy is a theoretical value it is calculated from the equation and from some figures but this yield that is an experimental value which is determined naturally which is a theoretical value Atom economy that is independent of performer's competence, but yield it depends on performer competence because we know from our experiment, from our experience in the practical class, a particular me method of preparation of organic compounds is followed by all the students. The yield and quality of the products they vary from students to student, so that depends on the Performer's competence, but the atom economy of that particular process that too is remains same because that's a theoretical quantity. So there lies the difference between yield and atom economy. This is the multi-step process. A plus B gives C, then C plus D, E, all these things. And in that case, the intermediates which are formed and consumed in the consecutive step, they are not considered. Only the reactants. They are considered which are really consumed. That is why what we do in case of a three-step process. Suppose if the yield of the first step is ninety percent, if the yield of each step is ninety percent, then we calculate the overall yield as nineteen to nineteen to ninety by hundred, hundred, hundred into hundred. That means seventy percent nearly. You cannot calculate the atomic economy by simply multiplying the atomic economy of each individual steps. So. Am I clearly audible? Yes, yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. This is the an example already an insecticide. The manufacturing of this process that involves this calculation which I have shown over there. This yellow compound that is the intermediate form in the first step, then consumed in the second step, not considered. This purple compound formed in the second step, consumed in the third step, not considered. So. Following that calculation, the atomic economy of this process, 82.6 percent, which is higher than the atomic economy of a single nano catalyst, acts as the bridge between them. Nano size, they have got high surface area, so they have got increased contact between reactants and catalysts. So they mimic in that sense homogeneous catalyst, but they are not often soluble in reaction medium, so that can be easily. Separated from the reaction medium by filtration or magnetic separation, if the nanoparticle is magnetically active, so that offers the advantage of both homogeneous catalysis and heterogeneous catalysis. This is the future trend. This trend must be highlighted towards the students. And this is one reaction which we are very much familiar with. We have been learning this reaction from class eleven. Reduction of nitro to amine. Using thin concentrated H cell, and how is the product obtained? Because after the reaction, the amine is present in aqueous medium in the form of salt. The product is obtained after basification. When you are basifying this, enormous amount of the precipitate of thin hydroxide is obtained. Out of which the isolation of product that is quite cumbersome. Aniline is obtained by the reduction of nitro benzene with thin H cell after basification by steam distillation. Whenever we are mentioning something on green chemistry, we cannot do away with Professor Binda Munchandra Ranu, whom I think the pioneer of this subject in this country. Here, just I am putting one example. Professor Ranu has developed an elegant method for chemoselective reduction of nitro groups to amine with iron nanoparticles, where there is no formation of huge amount of byproducts like tin oxide. Number of substrates he has studied, and he has shown many reducible groups like aldehyde, ester, cyano, azide, imide. 
they survive only nitro is reduced this chemoselectivity that is very important attribute of a catalyst this chemoselectivity is very important regio selectivity important stereo selectivity selectivity means that i have mentioned to measure the reaction efficiency we are getting the desired product as more as possible this selectivity is a very important issue of green chemistry so green chemistry is not merely a catch phrase but an indispensable principle that will sustain our civilized society in the 21st century i would emphasize not me but it has been said by roji noyri that this concept is not a matter of clear cut scientific or technical expertise but rather a serious complex social issue in order to materialize our research goals in the real world we need a rational long term program supported by public understanding governmental policies and worldwide cooperation at both the individual and institutional level all members of our society must recognize the significance of green chemistry and with that purpose the green chemistry has been incorporated in our graduate syllabus which has been motivated by green chemistry task force committee formed by department of science of Tech, science and technology government of india so i like to suggest some books the most pioneering book green chemistry theory and practice by paul anastas and john warner mainly meant for the student teachers the students will feel bored if they read this book but the teachers all the teachers should read it real world cases in green chemistry two books they are also available in internet in that book you will find some examples which have been included in your syllabus their synthesis in a greener process the book by Professor Alu Alia, that's a very good book. You can have number of examples of different green processes in that book. But I feel most important book for our purpose, the students as well as teachers, is the book written by Dr. Chandrakanta Bandhavadhyay, whom I think all of you know. He is from the Department of Chemistry, uh, uh, Ramakrishna Mission, Vivekananda Centenary College, Rahora, and you know the Chemistry Department of RKMVC. that is known by the department of chandrakanta mondopadhyay the outstanding teacher outstanding scientist outstanding personality he has written a book for the purpose of the students as well as for the purpose of the teachers an insight into green chemistry by chandrakanta mondopadhyay i feel 70% of our purpose more than 70% will be solved from this book now the biggest challenge of green chemistry this is to use its rules in practice but if it be absolutely impracticable no theories of any value except as intellectual gymnastics it has been said who has never practiced science formally but who, has, who was invited by jamshed ji tata to become the first director of indian institute of science who was none other than shami vivekananda ah. so let us come to practical green chemistry i like to suggest two books one is included in your Uh, list of reference books on practicals that is number 4 green chemistry experiment a monograph by professor mihir kanti choudhury and co-workers beautiful examples have been listed over there that extraction of d limonene using supercritical carbon dioxide that is there all the experiments there there and another book i have seen very nice book many many Upon examples which are not included in your syllabus but that can they can be practiced in the laboratory green chemistry experiments in undergraduate laboratories edited by fai and mylia that is published by american chemical society but the experiments which have been listed in your syllabus they have been picked up by the monograph on green chemistry laboratory experiments which was for my which was compiled by green chemistry task force committee dst in that compilation you will have a comment general comment green chemistry experiments are introduced not to drastically replace the conventional ones rather they are considered complementary to the existing protocols and towards the end you see wherever possible and feasible the conventional process should be replaced with the greener ones to transmit the message of this issue and this statement uh, was actually proposed by me during a meeting and it has been totally included there without any modification so 
own experiment highlighting this last line wherever possible and feasible the conventional process should be replaced with greener ones to transmit the message of this issue detection of special elements in organic compounds with zinc sodium carbonate instead of metallic sodium we practice this process with metallic sodium we have done our teachers have done our students have done their students will also do but my suggestion is it is also given there in the monograph that can be easily downloaded from internet this monograph this zinc sodium carbonate there are green context this is extremely safe and as there is no risk of explosion of or getting caught fire when plunged to water you see in the among the beginners if the amount of sodium is taken in excess often it catches fire when it is being fused or if that is kept in excess but incompletely fused when they are adding it to water it explodes with fire that is the risk of accident in case of green chemistry the last point was it must not have the risk of accident minimize the potential for accident so the risk factor of using metallic sodium we can get over it by using an alternative zinc sodium carbonate moreover no additional precaution is needed during its storage for a long period of time because it is chemically unaffected by aerial oxygen and moisture you can simply keep it in any plastic container for months we do it in our laboratory and the laboratory staffs also they also like this very very because they need not take the hazard of cutting the sodium in small pieces simply they prepare taking 100 grams of zinc powder and 150 grams of sodium carbonate grinding them together putting it in the container the entire season goes with that material experiments can be performed very important with the aqueous solution of organic compounds which is impracticable with metallic sodium we did this reaction with zinc sodium carbonate with the aqueous solution of glycine we got excellent result of nitrogen these are the green contexts of this alternative process zinc sodium carbonate in place of metallic sodium this is the reaction which i always prefer this is also included in that book simply in that monograph you will find solid koh or noh but for, with noh it takes much longer time so it is better to stick to koh and that process is very simple you simply grind benzyl and koh together then put it in a test tube and add a cotton put a cotton plug at the mouth of the test tube keep it on the water steam bath for 20 minutes take it out dissolve the entire material in water if some unreacted benzofen benzyl is left behind that can be separated by filtration then you simply acidify you see the precipitates of pure benzylic acid that is coming out this is a reaction which i will tell you to do we have done this this is the picture of what we have done benzofenone is dissolved in isopropanol one drop of glycyl acetic acid is added to it and that is kept in bright sunlight at least for 8 hours and that is the most difficult part of this experiment you have to keep this set to at bright sunlight for at least 8 hours we have prepared 23 sets for 23 batches of our undergraduate students actually we prepared 24 one is absent here where is the last one that was actually prepared first by the class teacher who was none by none other than myself i prepared a set i did the reaction how i did this reaction i tried to do the reaction at the university but at the university i had the problem of getting it at clean exposure of sunlight because we are not allowed to go to the rooftop then what i did i took that vial we took i took the conical to my residence and i kept it on the rooftop of my own house i have seen beautiful crystals i asked all the students all the batches 23 batches to prepare the solution hand over the conical first to me i took them to my house i kept it there at the morning from 10 the sunlight becomes good up to 3 it is very good now my i wife shorpita i am really thankful to her she used to take everything away from the rooftop when the sun sets in 
and then next day i again put them you please take this much of trouble you will end up with fantastic result you see i am showing you one such picture in all the conicals you are getting white crystals of bench pinacol without any added reagent the most eco friendly process i have ever seen using sunlight this is the magnified view of the crystals in one of the flasks why i am insisting on this experiment because if you get this product the next step is very simple the pinacol pinacol only arrangement 1 gram of bench pinacol that is also given in the book of uh, in that monograph you simply dissolve in acetic acid iron trace amount iodine is added reflux for 10 minutes cool it in ice you get the precipitate of pinacol only extremely good reaction the previous one that takes a lot of time it takes much less time so probably combination of these two will compensate this is another re reaction which can also be carried out in the lab nitration of salicylic acid using calcium nitrate it is not at all a very costly reagent this calcium nitrate that is actually used as double fertilizer because it provides calcium as well as nitrogen the reaction is also very simple you take calcium nitrate acetic acid your sample heat on boiling water bath for 1 to 2 minutes only add crushed ice cool in ice bath for 1 hour you will get the product but one thing you should remember you should not add excess amount of water because this 5 nitrosalicylic acid that is appreciably soluble in the monograph it is written as 4 nitro but it should be 5 nitro if you follow the actual numbering process this is a green multi component reaction which is put forward by again professor bc ranu was i am fortunate enough to be his student and i was exposed to the area of green chemistry by him at a point of time when the subject of green chemistry was not practiced in our country even the name of green chemistry has not been coined by professor anastas here this is the three component reaction multi component reaction very simple reagents available in all the laboratories ethyl acetic acid benzaldehyde urea mix them together in a test tube put a cotton plug at the mouth so that the moisture doesn't come in and then heat the test tube on a steam bath for 9 at 90 degrees centigrade for hour you will find the crystals of the product this is dihydropyrimidine system they are coming inside the test tube then cool it ice take the entire mass with cold water wash and recrystallize no involvement of organic solvent nothing very simple also affordable in within affordable time another reaction i do not know why the reaction between acetone and benzaldehyde has been listed in your syllabus because the acetone benzaldehyde in aqueous sodium hydroxide this has been done for long time and that's a very conventional process what is the green context actually in green context you will find that reaction if you compare this i have simply replaced acetone with cyclohexanone only for the reason you have to grind the things together in a mortar and pestle and while grinding acetone being very much volatile it will be lost from the system you cannot do anything with this and you will not get any product so that's why i have changed it to cyclohexanone this is the amount following the stoichiometry this sodium hydroxide is taken with a little bit excess molar extent and then grinding together during the grinding if the proportion is correct a solid mass will be obtained add ice cold water to the mortar acidify with four normal ice cell to neutralize the sodium hydroxide and you then filter the product and you can do the crystallization acetone benzaldehyde reaction in that monograph i have found this can be carried out in ethanol medium by using catalytic amount of lithium hydroxide instead of stoichiometric amount of sodium hydroxide this is the green context one is catalytic amount of lithium hydroxide base is needed and second is lithium hydroxide is less hygroscopic than sodium hydroxide so these are the, the two advantages this is a very interesting reaction i think it can be practiced benzoin condensation benzaldehyde to benzoin conventionally it is done using extremely toxic poisonous compound potassium hydroxide and potassium cyanide nowadays it is done by using very innocuous compound vitamin b1 thiamine hydrochloride and this thiamine hydrochloride the mechanism is very important this mechanism we can also teach to the students and this 
the reaction is very simple using thiamine hydrochloride base ethanol benzaldehyde in this book which i am suggesting over here kl williamson this experiment also in the book of mk choudhury it has been advised to carry out this reaction at 6 to 65 degrees centigrade for 1 to 1.5 hours but there is a problem if the temperature is not properly maintained you won't get the product it will end up with some oily mass we have done this experiment in our laboratory and we have kept it at room temperature for three days we have not yet we were not able to get the filtered product but before lockdown due to lockdown obviously but before lockdown i have seen the crystal of benjali crystal of benjoin they have deposited inside the conical flask so you can simply prepare the reaction set and keep it and on the next in the next class you can come and open the cupboard and then see what is happening and this reaction i think can also be done bromide bromide reaction medium is water and glycerol acid according to the nature of the room temperature and after the reaction one can uh, one should neutralize the medium with sodium hydroxide solution and use of sodium bromide and bromate in place of potassium and bromate seems to be more cost effective the book one must read to learn chemistry is the book of nature again said by Shami Vivekananda. So I think following this philosophy, the natural product is also included in this section. And I have nothing to say in this matter because you can have everything in the book of I.L. Finner, Organic Chemistry, Volume 2, a pioneering book. All of us, my teachers, my contemporaries, my students, everybody follows the book of Finner, both the volumes. So you can't cross the sea near, merely by standing and staring at water. Green chemistry has been incorporated. How, how to tackle? No. You have to jump into the sea and you have to swim across. This has been said by Gurudev Raghunath Thakur. Why I am uh, remembering Tagore today? Because especially I am remembering Tagore is remembered all the time at all moments of our life. And it is also very much relevant to any new pursuit but specially i remember tagore on this very particular day because in the year 1941 on this day of 7th august he passed away and this is the time when his funeral procession actually started on that particular day he said death is not extinguishing the light it is only putting out the lamp because the dawn has come yes the dawn has come and he presumed the world to be free from violence, to be, in the real sense, green. So thin green and with the help, with the hope of having a new dawn, thank you very much for your patient hearing. So, the Dr. Kundu and uh, Dr. Pal Shupandadi, uh, any question in chat box I, uh, uh, so that you can discuss? Actually, Actually, in chat box, no question. Perhaps Chandra has very lucidly and elaborately explained green chemistry, keeping in mind our syllabus. So, probably there is no question. Only one question from Pallavi Sarkar. He wanted to know the book of Lancaster. What about the book of oh, Lancaster? It's a, very, oh, it's a very good book, but I do not know how far it is available. But it's a very good book, no doubt. But it will not be palatable for the students. It is made for the teachers. For the students, if you want to suggest the book, in my opinion, the number one preference is the book by Chandrakanta Bandhapadda. The second one is Vikya Alwalya. But the Lancaster book is very good for the teachers, obviously. Obviously, that's a very good book. Very good book. But that's not that much available for me. Is it that much available? So, Hello, uh, they're saying that it's available. Yeah, yes, but sir. it's very nice, but that is not palatable for the students, but that is very good, but it's very important for the teachers. Very good. Yes. Very so, Shukonadi, uh, can we uh, uh, can we carry the question as a session or close here? 
So Chandan, it's a bit a little bit of pressure for us. Uh, we have to make it through well. Well, uh, BSE discipline specific elective, and uh, our quota is uh, B4. Uh, really, uh, I don't have much to say actually. That's why uh, before going into the uh, particular B4, uh, well, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes, uh, yes, you are audible, Professor. Thank you. So, before going into uh, the particular uh, our topic, that is B4, uh, let me uh, just say a few words uh, in general on DSE. As you know, of course, that in semester 5 and 6, the students have to opt for 2 plus 2, 4 uh, DSE courses. And there are a uh, total of uh, A124 and B124, that is A4 plus 4, 8 courses uh, are there. And each of them are 60 plus 40 lectures, uh, theory and practical. Uh, and then credit goes uh, like 4 plus 2, 6. So, as you know. Uh, but is it uh, 4 out of 8? Uh, not really. It is not any 4 out of 8. Uh, 2 from 4A. A1, A1 to A4, right? 2 from 4 A's. And again, it is not any 2 of 4. And similarly, uh, for uh, 2 from 4 B's, again, it is not any 2 of 4. Rather, option is like this. A1 or A2, B1 or B2 in 5th semester, and A3 or A4, B3 or B4 in 6th semester. Fine. Uh, uh, of course, I am talking about uh, Calcutta University syllabus, uh, and I am sorry that uh, this is the national level, at least state level seminar webinar. Uh, but uh, this is what I have heard that uh, this is actually the EBC syllabus, more or less. The master copy is EBC syllabus, uh, so uh, we can talk on this. But uh, at the same time, we have noticed that uh, different universities uh, at national level or even state level. Uh, they have got some liberty, I mean they have exercised some degrees of freedom uh, to choose their uh, structure of syllabus and that is not 100% same from the university to university. So if we uh, have already exercised some liberty, I am not quite sure that how much, what percentage of freedom we have exercised, uh, but definitely we have uh, done something. So uh, my proposal is that uh, it's a high time that if we really have in principle or in practice uh, some uh, freedom. Of liberty, then uh, it is high time to uh, have a consensus. Uh, we are not the policy makers, of course, but of course, we can recommend some of the uh, recommendations uh, before the concern authority, uh, particularly when we have got uh, the last bit on this platform itself, uh, last uh, three days, including today, four days, the experts review. They have uh, taken the trouble of uh, going through. Uh, the syllabus uh, critically and they have uh, reviewed critically and made some comments particularly on feasibility and possibility of uh, execution of these programs and they have uh, referred on size of the courses uh, almost all of them have uh, confessed that the really the sizes are very huge and second more important question is the human resource and expertise right now we are not really ready for uh, many of the courses right now uh, particularly if you uh, consider the infrastructure and fund and readily available study materials right so these are the problems that are mentioned and the last point offer for choice uh, so the system we are in now is credit uh, choice based credit system right so how far we can give the choice in practice theoretically is there uh, probably not much uh, my prediction is that uh, in semester five a2 and A1, uh, almost 100% will opt for A2 right now, for the coming uh, few years, maybe, uh, for semester 5. And for semester 6, for some reasons, B4 would be preferred. Uh, I am not going into the explanation of those probable reasons, but this is my prediction only, right? Uh, so, now I am going uh, to my uh, topic, our topic rather, B4, dissertation. And as Kaya has already mentioned, it is different and unique on many uh, uh, skills points. First of all, it is very new. Uh, okay, the other DSC uh, topics are also very new, but uh, new, but uh, by maybe content, but not by structure. 
the theory is there, the practical is there, the same sort of uh, pattern of exam, evaluation, etc. That is one thing, but dissertation is completely new on that respect uh, as well. The second point is 5 versus 50. If you just have a look, you will see that at least 50 lines are there uh, for the other uh, syllabus uh, description of other DSC courses, but only 5, even less than 5 lines are there in this dissertation uh, course. So that is a unique feature that why it is so different. And another important point is no compulsory lab is there. For every other dissertation, there is a theory and there is a lab corresponding lab parts. But here, no compulsory lab is there. Of course, lab can be there uh, in other way. And as a result, the paper setting, moderation, examinations, examiners, HE, all sorts of things are very, very different in this scheme. And the most importantly, here, you have to, I mean, the students have to submit a project report, right? So, these are the things that uh, made uh, before so special. That's why it requires so special consideration and discussion. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we have to start with some uh, warnings, uh, caution points as uh, mentioned or remarked by our experts in the last three days, and that are homogeneity in conducting the courses. They have pointed out that it is very uh, difficult, but we have to do it. And moreover, conducting exam that again is very uh, different challenge and to keep consistent in evaluation that is also very different in this end, uh, compared to the other any courses uh, uh, and finally the review uh, once uh, word is mentioned in that syllabus that review work so that is uh, uh, should not be taken as a misleading one so uh, we have to take a clear idea of what review is how we can conduct the review what should be the quality of review work etc etc how it should be evaluated so all these technical points would be taken care of by ckp uh, dr chandan kumar pal and as i have uh, heard that uh, a few other senior teachers and friends have assisted him uh, in formulating that uh, guidelines so we need a guideline, a clear recommendation for a clear point-wise guideline we need for particularly for propose, uh, submitting the report, project report and probably on uh, review. Uh, so that they will be talking in the later part. Uh, so my part is rather a bit again different. I will be talking on the motivation and philosophy behind before. Uh, well, why before is at all there in the syllabus? What in mind of UGC? Uh, nowhere it is mentioned categorical at least i have not seen so naturally i will be going with my own perception you may not agree uh, but i have prepared uh, my uh, presentation uh, along that line of my own perception what i mean by motivation or philosophy behind this before well in our childhood we start with uh, this kind of uh, science a big uh, broad subject science uh, class uh, we say five six seven eight and then when we grow up, uh, we gradually divide the whole science in at least two parts, physical science and biological science. And then even if we uh, grow up further, we get a division further, physics and chemistry, right? And then uh, in BSc level, uh, we become chemistry on our student. And the left portion, okay, this is a general portion, blank, white. Uh, so chemistry on our student. And then uh, in the first year MSc or later on, uh, we get the division of inorganic, organic and physical specialization. And then if you even go further, then uh, okay, many, many other things can be there. So uh, this is the structure, right? Uh, if you consider this structure, what uh, the characteristic of this structure is, uh, let me uh, consider a axis coordinate system, X, Y, Z. And here uh, on the two dimension X, Y plane, uh, so many versatile subjects are there. Our students encounter so many different concepts, different subjects. So they are all mutual and uh, of course they are very connected with each other and rather they are very complementary. So this plane is all about this diversity, interconnectedness and complementarity whereas the, uh, whereas the third dimension, Z direction is, uh, it represents some depth of a particular, uh, maybe narrower but particular subject, uh, uh, topic. So this is how we go ahead uh, and uh, as it is visibly seen that uh, we are shrinking the XY area as we go uh, up uh, 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 up the uh, stair. So the a XY area is being uh, okay and at the same time we are increasing the Z length. Maybe the volume remains the same uh, 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 mathematically and in other words we are getting more and more compartmentalized. We are getting more and more specialized and more into the depth right so that is the system suggests so 
what? So what? Actually, for answering so what, I have considered two uh, two inherent properties, set of properties. One is of inherent in system. Uh, you see, uh, when you are in some level, say HS or BSc or even MSc, so you are in a particular Z level, uh, then uh, automatically uh, uh, for the coming days, we automatically get into the higher Z. Suppose you have uh, passed the exam, so naturally you are through to the higher level right and the higher level automatically makes me fit into that level because the structure is designed in that way right so uh, in a particular z level really we don't find any necessity uh, that much uh, categorically to aspire for something big uh, being in z to or for the z plus one level so uh, it is not really uh, that much necessary but however uh, uh, this is in general true but some uh, always there are some curious students some more uh, i mean better students uh, curious students so they may be more uh, having some aspiration so of course it is not bad uh, aspiring for higher jet at least a little bit of flavor that means i am referring to a kind of serious uh, research uh, being associated with some research work at the college level for the students so this is welcome but uh, it is not feasible all the time okay uh, but to remember that okay we are uh, encouraging students to go for the aspiration but uh, it must not be mandatory for them uh, we should not pressurize any way on their mind because they are already uh, hooked with so much of um, the bsc level and uh, if you consider the serious research how many teachers really uh, we uh, although we are all able capable in principle but how much we are doing research it's not possible uh, because of time restriction, uh, because of infrastructure problem and so many other technical and clerical problems as well. Uh, so it is not a very uh, favorable situation uh, for this point. And now I am going to a more, more important uh, aspect of my discussion that is inherent in human nature and of course also part of the system. Inherent in human nature. And that is the priority problem. Well, uh, we have uh, experienced almost all the colleges, excepting maybe uh, one or two colleges, that uh, how the students, honor students, for any subject, not only chemistry, how the honor subject, they are negligent about their general classes. I, I think you will agree with me that uh, mostly, 90%. Uh, for example, uh, probably that's why, that's why uh, physics, maths and computer, these are the subjects already in their general courses, right? Uh, and they can opt for that. Uh, on their chart. Yes. But still, recently in this CBCS curriculum, we have incorporated some uh, maths course, some computational course, and some physics uh, aspects in our honors, chemistry honors syllabus. Why? Uh, that means, is it is it the point that, okay, we also, the syllabus makers also know that the students are, uh, okay, they're suffering from this uh, bad habit or priority problem. So let us get it in our own curriculum. Fine. Okay, this is one of the reasons. There may be some other reasons, of course. Uh, and that negligence or priority problem or psychological bad habit problem, that actually leads to something more dangerous. Uh, negligence or lack in understanding the interconnectedness or holistic nature of science. Uh, that is very uh, big loss. And the second point is uh, lack in filling the overall beauty of coherence. Uh, it's a matter of practice, uh, not only in chemistry, but in life also. But that we uh, start to uh, uh, incorporate uh, uh, by default or unknowingly. And the th next part is realizing that differentiation and integration are two sides of the same coin. We are differentiating, that means layer after layer, we are getting compartmentalized. Uh, but uh, we tend to forget, uh, hopefully, we tend to forget, if not forget, uh, that integration is also needed. It's just the other side of the same coin. Uh, but we, uh, we often miss that. Uh, point and the, all these things uh, it goes on in the xy plane so if you are not careful about your xy plane gaming or playing on that xy plane then probably you will be suffering from all these symptoms or disease and naturally the inevitable outcome is uh, a sense of rivalry or rather than complementarity uh, it generates uh, psychologically it generates and that actually leads to even a bigger uh, aspect of perspective of your life also how? I am just giving some examples. Uh, I am calling it pairwise disharmony. Uh, so it should be harmonious. Rather, we, we generate some kind of disharmony. For example, theory versus practical. 
So I think you will admit that our students are that's our practice. Uh, the, our students are reflection of the teachers, of course. Uh, that when they are in a theory class, uh, they often forget that it is a practical uh, experiment oriented subject. Chemistry is practical. On the other hand, when we are in a practical class, we just forget that uh, there is a, a strong logical, ma mathematical science behind it. Uh, we take it as black box and uh, carry out the practical classes. So as if we have uh, made some barrier between theory and practical. And that same kind of barrier we often make by mistake, physical versus organic versus inorganic. Uh, classical versus quantum. Some, uh, some opt for quantum. Uh, nothing is there in classical, some of classical, okay, quantum is something, okay, you don't understand, uh, it's not needed. That's kind of thing. Uh, logical versus descriptive, mathematical versus non-mathematical. Uh, that's an important point, mathematical versus non-mathematical. Often we uh, fail to train them that, uh, okay, you need not be a master of mathematics. It's just a language in chemistry. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the computational. Uh, that you don't have to be a computer expert. We will be just doing the computational aspects, some of the aspects for a chemical purpose, right? And visualization versus memorization. So these are the things that very often we, we forget that these are really complementary to each other. They are not at all rivals to each other, right? So that is uh, one important point. And so uh, for my perception, uh, as per my perception, my aim, uh, as far as this dissertation is concerned, uh, the attempts to Number one, to overcome the bad thought habits. At least to give some light, uh, to open, so and awaken to the world of consistence, beauty and harmony of chemistry. Chemistry as a whole, right? Including physics, including maths, including organic, physical, inorganic, everything. And that means the whole, you have to remember, it is nothing but some of the parts, right? So we cannot ignore any of the parts. And differentiation and integration of both are very important. And the last two points are uh, most important that if I can broaden the horizon on the XY plane rather than to dip into the dip along the Z direction. So I think at the BSc level uh, project work, dissertation, this is, should be the theme or spirit or philosophy. At least my perception goes on that. And the most important, uh, what we can really do extend and explore further the new inclusions okay even on the xy plane you see many things are to uh, can be done at, uh, right uh, we we have uh, we are learning the students are learning uh, quite a few new things right so they are very new even new for teachers most of the teachers so uh, in in class lectures maybe it's not that possible uh, other than covering the syllabus somehow and uh, getting ready for exam uh, but some students are there they want to explore further so they can get some uh, scope in this project work and exploring further some conceptual aspects maybe they are old conceptual they have been learning since class 11 12 or even earlier but uh, they have never ventured into the depth of it uh, so they can uh, explore to some extent the conceptual depth of all those old concepts right so these are the aims and uh, moreover this is not less important that uh, whatever compartmentalization or specialization we make our system uh, make us make but uh, and today's nowadays the higher studies are very often multidisciplinary so uh, you have to have a look of a test of different compartments as well so that is no less important and Keeping all these things in mind, uh, as far as my spirit goes, I have written an article actually uh, in the uh, workshop volume, uh, Bunkim Shardar College and Physical Chemistry Teachers Forum, Volume 2. Uh, that article uh, contains actually uh, such proposal uh, of 53 pro proposal of projects uh, categorized in seven different categories, computational, mathematical, mathematical and computational, symmetry and group theory, history of science, quantum mechanics and general science. It can be extended. This is just an example that what uh, can be done. Uh, and of course, I will expect my friends to come up with this line and they will propose their own and that would give you a huge bank in uh, coming days, uh, a huge bank of proposals. And uh, I will just quickly go through, not uh, mention uh, one by one because it will take time. But I uh, just uh, to give you uh, the uh, confidence that okay, uh, he, 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 PD has really has done it. Uh, he has really at, uh, published a particle. Uh, say uh, computational, uh, uh, computational. We learn Newton-Raphson method in the uh, core book, core course. 
in uh, paper 11 uh, practical uh, numerical indication numerical indication that also we are doing uh, so we, we can apply this uh, learning uh, uh, that we have learned to a uh, some level a uh, basic level for other chemical problems so one student can go for searching what are the problems we can apply here uh, for this uh, techniques so similarly uh, least square method and nonlinear least square method that was Tonkon uh, was talking about so these are the types of examples that we can explore further under that category and then comes mathematical okay so again we are getting some new things uh, in acc course uh, mathematical right so we can explore further at least some of the students uh, explore uh, if uh, mathematics is our, their uh, choice and then you can combine mathematics and computation okay you have learned two different things two different compartments so again again i'm integrating the mathematics and computation you can integrate and uh, explore it further in your uh, dissertation and this is a bit something different if someone is interested beyond a little bit beyond the syllabus he can go for for example group theory and symmetry uh, and then uh, history of science you see uh, in physical chemistry or all branches of science uh, starting from economics to biology or chemistry physics we come across so much of mathematical interesting concepts like we often use e we, everyone knows actually e pi uh, root over minus one that is i so e pi i gamma infinity zero and numbers in general so they are very uh, intriguing interesting numbers and uh, there is a lot of history right they have not come out of blue just uh, uh, one fine morning we have got this a lot of history is there and this is history is always attractive to personally to me and uh, maybe for uh, many other students so let us give some scope to go through the history but not history of uh, ram jammu whom we have masjid but history of science uh, quantum mechanics uh, well Quantum mechanics, we are getting a lot of quantum mechanics and still scopes are there for further exploration, including some method I mentioned here, which are actually part of our uh, DAC A2 course, right? Uh, A2 uh, mathematical X, uh, MS Excel course. And uh, finally, the general science. So uh, you can have this, uh, all these uh, uh, PPTs from Kia or uh, Ajunta. Here are the references are from 28 books I have referred and all are uh, popular books, uh, popular at the same time very serious and not our text, so-called textbooks, 28 references are there and uh, I recommend highly um, inter-college collaboration. I personally uh, recommend because uh, the problem, another problem I forgot to mention that in some colleges there are uh, many, many students, teachers are less. In some other colleges, teachers are adequate but students are much less. So uh, there could be a good collaboration and I will be expecting at least from uh, other teachers and colleges because my request is uh, my friends to feel free to ask me for any sort of cooperation including that in terms of all the books referred here. Uh, I do really have all those hard copies. Hope you, along with your students, will enjoy the adventure of landing in many different wonderlands beyond chemistry, but of course not very away from chemistry either. So chemistry is always at the center point and we are all around it. And uh, thank you in advance for your coming collaboration. So thank you. So over to Chandan. I assume that I was audible throughout. I'm not quite sure. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, thank you. So my uh, part is over. Hello, Ajunta. So Chandan is here. Chandan, where is Chandan? Hello, Chandan, where are you? I can't see you. He is in the meeting room. But Hello, Chandan. Dr. Pal. Can you hear? Hello, Dr. Pal. Please unmute yourself. Dr. Pal. Yes. Dr. Pal, please unmute. Yes. Oh, God. Dr. Pal. Dr. Paul can't hear us. It is still muted.
हेलो डॉक्टर पाल वी आर वेटिंग फॉर यू एक्चुअली Yes, it is still mute. He did unmute once, but then again it got muted. Let me call him. And I don't know why it's that many. Uh, that particular Chandu uh, is a close friend of Hong Kong. Hello. हाँ Okay. It's visible now. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. So before I start my discussion uh, on dissertation, I like to mention some points. Uh, right now, we have just had elaborated the philosophy and the working principle. So before I, I will uh, discuss the practicality of the situation and how it. I am just thinking that. Uh, Suppose a student has decided that he has taken this dissertation of his choice or her choice, and how to go about it. So, so let me uh, uh, tell you one thing. Point number one is that this dissertation may be done on either any research or any review matters, uh, and some of these research topics. Please share your screen, Chandan. Please share your screen. Allow your screen. Yes, yes, I am sharing. Yes, no. I am sharing. No, you are not allowing. You are still not allowing. You allow please. Okay, okay, okay. Right now, uh, right now, I uh, did not no. get this. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, this Hello, present now. Hello, sir. Sir. Hello. Sir, please uh, click on allow. Please click on okay, allow okay. at the top of your screen. Will you allow me to okay. use your see your screen? Please allow. Okay, okay, okay. Allow. You just stay I there. Allow. Yes, I am allowed. No, you didn't allow. No, but still, it's not visible. You just go to the top and uh, uh, yes, yes, allow. Yes, I got the top. But it's not showing that kind of. Hello. Please, please uh, give me some time. Hey, Chungi. Chungi. He has got disconnected. I think so. Mm. Uh, so, Oruna Buddha, are you uh, Oruna Buddha? Please unmute yourself, Oruna Buddha. Yes. Or, yeah. Uh, can you please uh, take this time for a short while? 
without wasting uh, time we can manage everything because we have already yeah, uh, session also uh, no question yet uh, raised uh, yeah uh, but uh, nice presentation can, by can, uh, yeah yeah but yeah, you by, can by, by you can you can talk yes yes yeah. uh, but, but you can give some uh, uh, your ideas about uh, this uh, dissertation uh, we will be uh, glad really okay uh, i can uh, give that uh, uh, i i uh, before that uh, i'll uh, say that uh, uh, very nicely uh, yotos uh, actually explained why this particular portion is unique and special uh, but this particular dsc before is not uh, uh, compulsory for all and uh, he also explains the motivational part and philosophy behind it it is very nice uh, as i amused actually and he concluded that uh, this this may be to overcome uh, uh, bad thought of it and broadening the horizon awakening the beauty and harmony and conscience that is good no doubt uh, i think uh, it is a very good approach but uh, one thing uh, he also concluded that history of science can be included in this particular uh, part and uh, chemistry rich interdisciplinary works also can be allowed uh, that can be debated here uh, by participants because uh, uh, on if if that can be taken except only chemistry then uh, complication will arise in examining and selecting the examiners etc so the onkon may comment on that particular part but uh, what you actually talking before chandon came actually i can uh, share my uh, view regarding the guideline of a project yes uh, the right. guideline of uh, submission of a particular project was not explained in this particular discipline specific elective uh, before dissertation part only our uh, syllabus uh, tells us that in a total of 105 lecture hours a student has to carry out research oblique review on a topic as assigned by the respective college a project report and digital presentation will be required for the assessment of the student at the end of the semester but a definite guideline is required and i think the first uh, this this particular guidelines the first point may be that a title should be there to clearly identify the topic of the project the second part uh, obviously an introduction should be there indicating the objective of the study and the question its background and uh, specifically Uh, uh mentioning the scope of the work a uh, third point should be there shall be a body of the work containing at least following parts i am emphasizing those parts may be relevant work under stated background to fulfill the objective outlined and secondly the methodology used in detail and third presentation of data and tables and figures as applicable and uh, we may also say that uh, uh, the volume of the work should not be very small it uh, should ha have to be uh, equated with uh, 105 lecture hours which was specified in our syllabus and the work should have to be related Hello? or chemistry related Hello? okay okay uh, chandan if can continue yes Uh, hello i am sorry that my uh, connection data connection was lost so should i resume should i resume yes yes yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, as the course suffers that it is in a total of 105 lecture hours a student has to carry out the research or review on a topic as assigned by the respective college the project report and digital presentation Will be required for the assessment of the student at the end of semester. So, how this should go? So, actually, what is the research project work? Uh, it should be an intensive study on a topic. It explores the subject in depth and elucidates the information about the problem investigated, the methods used to solve the problem, the results 
of the investigation and conclusions inferred and a set of recommendations that can be implemented. And this may be viewed as a uh, kind of a small, uh, the time frame has to be the limitation. So project research can be descriptive or explanatory. In a descriptive study, we study the existing systems, prevailing conditions of the topic under research. Uh, in exploratory study, we explore the area of study by introducing the Kia, yeah. please, please, please uh, inform him that, that he is not audible. Only booster button, neither visible nor audible. Yeah, it is not audible. I think, Unabuda, you go ahead, please, uh, with your points. Because this part of Chandan's uh, deliberation, I uh, know. So you can cover that much in the meantime. Yeah, please unmute, unmute uh, yourself. Yeah, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the uh, particular time, uh, uh, we have to complete in a particular time. So without wasting time, uh, please, Orunabuda, give the guidelines. So uh, what we uh, know the guideline of 50 marks and 30 marks. So we have 50 in theory and 30 in practical. I think uh, you can, you know better it, uh, how to divide the, uh, sorry, how to divide 50 marks and 30 marks. Uh, please go ahead, Orunabuda, uh, detailing the uh, modalities of marks, which you uh, need actually. This is not the text you, uh, text, uh, uh, textbook message. Uh, so we know about this as we are all our PhD here uh, so please uh, uh, about the marks distribution we know the detailing actually uh, okay the guidelines can be shared uh, later on uh, by the university we can send it to them uh. okay. uh, you, you uh, can distribution of, yes. yeah, yeah. I'll provide hmm. uh, regarding the uh, distribution of mark I propose uh, that uh, 15 marks should be there in introduction and where yes. the introduction uh, would be three part, uh, con uh, including three part, uh, that is background, uh, objective and scope. So uh, for each, each of the three five parts, marks? Yeah, five, 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 marks? five marks for each, so altogether 15 marks. So background okay. five, objective five and scope of the work five, okay. so total introduction is 15 marks and body of the work will be of 15 marks uh, this uh, body of the work will uh, include definitely uh, the data figures etc and the entire work and uh, interpretation and critical discussion will contain 10 marks and the significance and conclusion will be of five marks and literature survey and references that should be there and it will carry five marks so altogether 50 marks should be there in the project part and the 30 marks should be there in the uh, presentation part and the presentation of the project work will carry 10 marks uh, slides and other aids teaching aids uh, used for the interpretation that should uh, contain 10 marks and uh, uh, slide mean powerpoints definitely and defense will uh, take 10 marks so altogether 30 marks in this particular field and 50 marks uh, can be subdivided in the project part in this manner and we can uh, uh, take a suggestion from uh, other uh, participants also regarding this uh, so and we can I conclude and I, we can send it to the board of studies for their uh, 
consideration. Okay, so uh, thank you, Aruna Buda. I think uh, you are very clear about the division of marks, uh, 50 marks for theory. Uh, as we know, when we um, write the proposal for a project, uh, as uh, there is everything uh, like it, first introduction, then body, then uh, importance. So you, you will get, uh, we will get the write-up from you. That's no problem. And 30 marks for practical, uh, of which 10 marks for PowerPoint presentation, 10 marks of uh, um, the, uh, uh, his or her uh, speaking power or explanation power, power of explanation, and 10 marks you, you are uh, uh, putting for a uh, defense. That means uh, yeah. question answer. That, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that uh, an examiner or a group of examiners uh, uh, will go for some uh, questions and uh, he or she will answer properly and on it uh, 10 marks will be uh, left so that is the marks of 30 uh, the, the marks division of practical marks and that is one of the has uh, uh, is very much clear and uh, we uh, want to know from the audience uh, or uh, 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 what they, they no, no, first no. first uh, Chairperson, I, I will uh, request you to first uh, request uh, Prokdamoy and Subhudip. What is yeah, their yeah. Uh, opinion? Yeah, and Subhudip, yeah. uh, first uh, you discuss and then we will go to the audience. Uh, is it okay for or not? Chandran is presenting. Uh, finally. Fine. Chandu, can you hear me? I think there is some late problem with Chandu, maybe. Do you know what you're saying? Secured line, secured line, so shall I present? Yeah, 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 we are ready. We are ready. Okay, okay. Some of the points have already been covered, probably, uh, Aruna Mada, have you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Show us the slides. So we will be able to show the slides for us. Okay. Okay, I am continuing. Hello? Yes. Ah. So, uh, I was uh, thinking that uh, the format of the presentation, uh, the structure of the project report, am I audible and visible? No, you are not visible. You are not visible. No, no, the presentation is visible. Yes, yes, presentation, that's, that's okay. Go to the slide show. Structure of the project. Yeah, yeah, go to the slide show. Yes, yes. Structure of the project, okay? Yes, so yes. This first, first is the title. The title should be there. Second is the certificate of originality. A certificate from the teacher or guide supervising the work should be provided, indicating the work to be fundamental, original, and unpublished. Done specifically for the fulfillment of the degree or criterion should be provided. That is the acknowledgement. This is the very formal thing. So, next is the table of contents. Followed by an introduction. This is very important because from this part onwards, the project has to be evaluated. An introduction should be there indicating the objective of study under question, its background and specifically mentioned scope of the work and other information necessary should be given. Which slides then, are not changing. Uh, slide is getting? No, slides no, are not stuck on a single slide. Yes, you have not gone for slide show. You have not gone for slide show. Slide show. Yes, I have gone to the slide show. No, no. Then put arrow. Put arrow in your laptop. Don't put yes. arrow in your laptop. It's not uh, moving actually. Or you can just click on the slides that is beside uh, you. Click on yes, the I have got the presentation. 
Yes. Uh, please, could you please start from slide one? Yes, you are you are showing slide number seventeen right now. Yes. 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 Uh, I think I should start from this part. I am going. Okay. Just scroll up to slide one. Seventeen is selected. Yes, yes. On the left hand side. Hey, Chunki. 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 I think uh, Chantu, you can send us the study material also. Chunki, Chunki. Hello, Chantu. Am I audible? Chantu, hello. Hello, Chantu. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. अरे स्लाइड पे स्टार्टअप से चोल से ना. Hello, uh, Prokamoy and uh, Shubhudeep. Are you? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, madam. Uh, yes. We need uh, you also to along with Chandu. Proka, please, please carry on. Proka, please carry on. Uh, actually, uh, Priyotosta and later uh, Orunapoda has uh, very nicely detailed about the guidelines and uh, objectives of the uh, dissertation. Uh, what Orunapoda has uh, pointed out, uh, interdisciplinary subject, I fully corroborate this proposal and it should be there in, in the uh, final university guideline, I think. Uh, it because uh, is Chandan there? You can carry on before Chandan uh, uh, is ready. Because uh, chemistry, uh, biochemistry, and some biological chemistry, biology, this is very closely related. And it should be there, uh, these interdisciplinary topics should be there, I think. And okay, but, but, point, uh, but one thing, Prokha, uh, it, no. uh, it will be allowed by Board of Study, just uh, interdisciplinary? I don't know. Is it no, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I am just suggesting. Uh, uh, it is our proposal. But final decision is, of, 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 of course, of Board of Study. Okay. And uh, uh, I don't if, know whether the will allow it or not. And one question to Piyotusda also, also uh, if we think of uh, uh, um, review, we can think of review type of um, dissertation or we can go for experiments. Both are welcome, right? Of course. Of course, both are welcome. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, but the question from, that, question from Sabosti is very specific. Uh, that whether review only with some presentation is okay or not. My answer is yes. Yes, I think either, either will do. I believe that review I, work is most. Yeah, yeah. In the book, this correct. Review work is most uh, convenient for uh, most uh, of the colleges because of the limited infrastructure oh, and right. the time. Yes. Yes. But if any of our colleagues they have any ongoing project, 
then they uh, can very well carry out a project, uh, uh, I mean, a hand-on project work which they can present. That is also, uh, I mean, highly appreciable. And programmer and obviously Shuhudi, um, I am not in question or answer session, but I have one question to you. Uh, what will be the volume of object uh, which comprises yes, of 30 yes. this, marks? This like is a here. very important, this is the most important part that there should be a parity in the volume of the work, be it an experimental work, be it a project work, that we have to decide. That what should be the volume? Am I audible? Yes. Hello. Yeah, you are yes, audible. Yes, audible. Yes, audible. Can you see the uh, evaluation part of the project? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just uh, uh, go for evolution of the project, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I go. Just yeah. give the division marks. Uh, so uh, I think regarding the volume of the project, where we just uh, discussing. The volume of the project should be about uh, uh, 40 to 50 pages at least uh, because uh, the evaluation to be done on the basis of there are two parts. One is the 50 marks, the project itself, the submitted project report will be sent for evaluation. The project report will be evaluated on the following criteria. This is a proposal only. First part is the introduction with the 15 marks, the background giving five, objective being five, and scope being five. This the introduction part is very important. Then work, the entire body of work. If it is an experimental work or uh, done on the basis of some other, then review will contain five, and content of the work is 15. And if it is a review itself, then the scope and the framework of the literature and the uh, evaluation, the the evaluation of the each paper, each uh, summary, this is the content. Then result and discussion should have 10 marks, its elucidation and conclusion, 5 marks each, and significance with the logical inference, what is the significance of this work and why this work is important, that should be logically inferred. This is only a single pointer with 5 marks. So that is 15, 20, 10 and 5, altogether 50 marks. This is for the submitted project in the soft and hard form. And then the presentation of the VIVA, uh, which is of 10, uh, which is of total 30 marks, of which 10 is on the scale of delegation, delivery and description and performance. Then second part, 10 marks for format, the data representation and precision, how precisely he uh, she presents his or her data and 10 marks for the defense and impact. Defense means uh, how the student uh, answers the question. I think for five minutes uh, for each student's presentation, five minutes at the most should be allotted. You see questions to be asked by the examiner. And uh, how it is not that how elaborately explains or he or she is able to. It is the attitude with which he is answering the question and making the mark that is the important. So altogether 10, 10 plus 10 plus 10, this is the 30 marks. This is for approval of respective head examiner or the approval of the product studies. This is my proposal. And considering this is all about this 80 marks evaluation. And considering that this is the first experience of an undergraduate or say graduate students at the fifth uh, semester. So we should uh, be very liberal and thinking that it is an attempt only, not that it's a very elaborate uh, and a very, I think, uh, elaborate and comprehensive work. It is just a study. And as Priyatosda has pointed out that many things should be studied. So this area, I think that will be helpful for a student if these, all the teachers coming together and they give a list of things and these are the seven eight topics on organic these are five six topics on inorganic and some other topic on physical or any other general topic then it is it will be easier for the student to choose because uh, and this has to be very important that this has to be done uh, on the internet uh, thing basic things so uh, in my original presentation i had included a section of uh, to protect from plagiarism. Tell me something from the internet 
that has been put together and uh, collected together for some cut and paste technique. This should not be there. So with that, I conclude that uh, uh, this kind of project things will, will be there. So now we will put discuss things. So thank you, Chandan. Uh, actually, Pio Tosta Urunaguta has their comments, their comments, uh, 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 Chandan also. Uh, but uh, Proka also uh, did the same. Uh, any uh, any uh, thing uh, uh, from Shubhodeep? Can you uh, uh, do you like to uh, tell something about it? Hello, Shubhodeep. Yes, madam. Uh, uh, Oh, uh, somebody is asking about the pelvism, pelvism of the work. Okay, uh, so please, uh, we need some answer from our uh, speakers, Priyotasta or Chandul. Uh, so, please yeah, answer have, this uh, question. I have already answered in the chat box. That, uh, it can be easily caught uh, by some technique. So then okay. fine, if it, is, if it can be caught, then you can we can take some, uh, in the exam hall also, in exam hall, what we do, uh, that's the same thing, kind of, so part of our game, part of our culture, so, so that's a altogether a different game, uh, to fight this cultural problem. Yes, also, also part of uh, education, no? Right. Uh, also, I, uh, another question, somebody asked, what will be the presentation time? I yeah, think it's uh, 10, 10, 10, 10 to 15, around 15 minutes, not more than 15 minutes. Oh, 10, to 15 minutes. 10, 10, 10 to 15 minutes. Someone will stop presenting it. I have to say, I have to say. So, not more than 15 minutes. Ampun, you are BOS member, so uh, please uh, 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 take all this uh, to be granted by uh, UGBOS. Uh, that's why we are doing all this uh, division, uh, so it must be um, uh, uh, done uh, in UGBOS, right, Ampun? Yeah. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, one for more sure. question is there, Kya. Uh, one has yes. asked that uh, 50 pages uh, is too much. Uh, I think it I think 50 pages is too much for undergraduate students. Around 20. Uh, one has commented. Exactly. So, uh, uh, it, that is a. Uh, right, Am I right? Number. Around 20. So, it is right. important. Either the volume of the work should be equivalent to 105 hours of teaching. Right, right. Yeah. That is That's important. important. Yeah. So how do you how do you, no, 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 how do you how do you convert how do you convert hundred and five hours of teaching to a uh, viable way? Yeah, no? that, so that's that's an abstract statement actually. Converting hundred and five hours of teaching to a project that is an abstract statement. We, it's it's very difficult to work like that. Uh. Uh, you see, I think it requires uh, more time to discuss on all these things. Yes, uh, yes, some more time. Right, yes, yes. right. Yes, yes. now we cannot decide all these things. But the point is, okay, we have to keep in mind that there should be a proportionality. But what is the proportionality constant that we are not quite seeing? Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Uh, we can only say it will be within 50 pages. Yeah. We can say it will be within 50 yeah. pages. Yeah. Yes. No, actually, the students, the students will have to appear for physical, uh, theoretical courses, inorganic. Only for organic, we don't have anything in semester six. But they do have physical and inorganic in semester six as well. So we have to take that into account also, that they have to prepare for those things as well as the dissertation. It's not only the dissertation they are going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Moreover, there is another DSC yeah. course. Exactly. Another DSC course, either yeah. link chemistry or analytical. Yeah. Course. Yeah. 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 Course. Yeah. So we have That's to right. take all these things into account and considering that they are undergraduate students, not postgraduate students. Uh, I'm not quite sure who is Pingo Penguin. Uh, <laughs> he or she has been giving good comments throughout. Uh, so he has mentioned that uh, the specification, the double space, 50, 50 pages is not uh, complete information. It has to be a four size, double space, and Times New Roman, a uh, 12 font. 
So then if the complete information is there. So he is Rajiv Mondol. He is Rajiv Mondol. He is a standard inverse of standard now. Double space 12 count. That is the standard format. Yeah. Okay. So please note it. Come on. Yeah. Yes, point. yes, yes. Actually, in my presentation, which I did not present for technical, it was there. Yeah. It was there. I, yeah. I, I, it was there that it should be twelve point times new Roman form, and space. I tried, thought that one point five. That that in that case, forty page will be enough. Forty yeah, page is enough. We shared. I hope because we could not see it. It will. Yes, I will. I will give it to Kia. Yeah. Oh, sorry. One, one more. Yeah. Okay. okay. One more question is from Suchanda Chakraborty. Suchanda Chakraborty, how many students will do the project under each faculty? For each student, so do we have specific project? In case of inter-college collaboration, whether we exchange the students? Three questions are actually. So uh, it depends. I have answered actually. How many students per uh, faculty? That depends on the college and the uh, personal initiative of the teachers. Uh, there is no hard fast rule. Uh, they are not should. Uh, so that might not be. And uh, for each student, uh, a specific project. Yes, of course. For each student, there must be some specific project. Of course. And the last portion, that inter-college collaboration, whether we exchange the students. Well, if you can exchange, that would be fine. Uh, both way traffic. But even it is one way traffic, it's okay. Uh, but your college students are coming to me, but my college students are not going to your college. That's okay. Collaboration can be either because one way or both way. Uh, depends on the student strength and also the number of faculties available. For example, yeah, that, in our college, yeah. we have say ten faculty and forty yeah, students. That's the local parameter, college dependent so, parameter. So, oh. it is, yeah. Board of studies cannot dictate. Uh, I think on this line. Yeah, yeah. They are not. Yeah. Regard, uh, regarding checking one question is uh, here. And uh, we can suggest board of studies to fix three examiners, uh, both for uh, the uh, project and uh, for the presentation. Mm -hmm. One each from physical, organic, and inorganic. Of course, of course. Of course. Uh, so, uh, uh, Arunachal, you know, uh, yeah, uh, and Chandon, uh, should we go uh, with which dissertation? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I think uh, uh, we have completed uh, our uh, webinar uh, for four-day long national webinar. Uh, first, uh, I, Ashutosh College and Moulana Ajat College uh, jointly organized uh, this webinar. Uh, and I should say, uh, Moulana Ajat College uh, did a lot, uh, uh, especially from technical side there. Um, well, they have done wonderful job for uh, as everything was visible for each moment, uh, even for students, for YouTube, for live. It was a fantastic job. And I must congratulate Shubhadeep Oriji uh, and my uh, very um, uh, my joint convener Ajanta for this job. As I am one of the convener, uh, uh, so uh, I uh, should uh, say that we I we thought that we would uh, uh, do this webinar for the sake of students, for the sake of teachers, because we had a bitter experience on uh, ACC curriculum as we didn't have. Have any kind of reference uh, books all together so that each college is following that book or uh, model questions we had nothing and that and that was the reason that uh, a part of students, a large part of students, suffered a lot, very poor marks over, over uh, actually they carried in SCC. And that's why we thought that uh, DSC it comprises of eight parts, and of which four should be taken. Uh, so we must uh, go for this. Especially uh, we are uh, right now without uh, uh, going college, uh, so we have time. Uh, we go for webinar. Uh, so so so. so things and uh, it was very uh, burdensome job uh, because uh, uh, we thought it uh, might uh, not meet um, a good expectation it might be a despair we can't do nothing we can't get nothing uh, actually 
uh, but uh, at the end of this webinar this is the, my, my very personal opinion i think uh, we have bought a lot but this is very personal uh, so uh, i will go to my uh, dear colleagues my dear audience uh, so that they can share their feelings because i can't uh, think my feeling is everything uh, so first i uh, go to uh, i uh, i don't know nukurdi is here i think nukurdi are you here nukurdi mm, yes i am here yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. I, 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 I can start with you. You are a senior teacher, very good teacher, and you always, uh, you are always present uh, uh, along through this uh, webinar. Uh, so you can say something. You can share your feelings, please. Okay. Thank you, Kia. Um, actually, at the outset, I would like to convey my thanks to Kia from the bottom of my heart for conceptualizing the whole thing and not only conceptualizing but uh, executing this at an hour when it was most needed. She deserves a very big thank you from all of us and so does Ajunta and all other members of the Department of Chemistry, Ashutosh College as well as Molanasa College. Now, uh, as far as my personal experience goes, I registered myself for all the four days and I must say that I had an excellent overview of all the courses that we are supposed to cover as discipline specific elective papers not only in semester five but as well as in semester six as well so this actually gave all of us a great opportunity to have an idea in a nutshell of the varied topics to be covered just within a span of four days it has been an extremely fruitful endeavor extremely fruitful and I must thank the resource persons who have actually tried, I mean, tried their level best and they have put in a lot of effort to present the entire course material, mostly topic wise. They have suggested the names of books and some of them have took the pain. They were so meticulous that they not only, uh, I mean, just suggested the names of the books, they even provided chapter wise uh, I mean a breakup of so that you know, which topic can be covered uh, from which chapter of the book that is extremely extremely amazing help for the teachers and as well as the students so my experience is very good because all of us will be having at least a very good overall idea that what are we supposed to teach and how do we proceed with them and I'm sure as they have all mentioned that they would be providing the materials and everything later on so it would be more convenient so that and it's an extremely I mean excellent opportunity where we all the teachers irrespective of our disciplines physical or organic or inorganic they have come together and we have experienced and explored the area of discipline specific um, elective course teaching together my heartfelt thanks to all the organizers thank you so much thank you Nukurdi, for your valuable comments about our webinar and uh, now uh, i think uh, raka of uh, narashin Dutta college is here uh, is raka here Dr. Raka, yes, yeah, yes, Dr. Raka, uh, can you tell us something about your feelings? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, first of all, I must thank the organizers, that means, uh, uh, that means Ashutosh College and Molanaja College. Uh, also, the chairperson, Professor Choitali Mukherjee, and the members of UG Board Studies chemistry and the conveyors and most of all uh, speakers who have taken their valuable time to say about specific elective topics which will be taught uh, in fifth sem coming fifth sem and fifth sem uh, uh, actually it was a wonderful uh, experience to sum up uh, 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 a broad topic, different topic, uh, within uh, four days, it is tough, really tough, because we know that in spite of all criticism, uh, 
the organic, inorganic, physical, chemistry are one apart from each other from the very base of its orientation. It is different. It needs some basic common concept, no doubt. But uh, whatever the cause may be, we teachers from physical chemistry, from inorganic chemistry, and from organic chemistry uh, are um, facing differences from each other in uh, approaching a problem. I think it is uh, it is observed from uh, my studenthood. I observe this from my studenthood. So, uh, combining all those things within uh, in a webinar within four days, it is a tough job. It has been done beautifully. All the participants are uh, very much, very much uh, in very much engrossed, and uh, they have enjoyed the program. I think, but uh, same time from physical chemistry. Can I uh, put some emphasis on the DSC, uh, which is on physical chemistry or, or which is tilted in physical chemistry? There is some uh, questions or there is some discussions between us, some of other teachers. That there are many colleges where the physical chemistry teachers are very less in numbers. And uh, there are colleges even where there is no substantive teacher in physical chemistry, only the presently appointed fact or previously they are part-time teacher, whatever it may be, they put the, these facts or get uh, lecturers or part-timers, whatever it may be, they cannot give the time uh, substantive teacher can give. So there are colleges where only one substantive teacher in physical chemistry or no. So, how far this extensive teaching that we want to give our students for their betterment is possible? One of the options is uh, uh, told by Professor Priyato's doctor uh, through the exchange process. So, it is a beautiful approach. But if we are talking about the dissertation, Interdisciplinary uh, on interdisciplinary topics with uh, physics, with biology, with mathematics, with computation. Can we take our teachers from other disciplines of the same college to teach a particular topic in the ethics? Suppose I am a physical chemist. I have big a little bit of quantum and a little more bit of uh, Excel in my research. And um, I came long away after that. So now, if I'm going to teach a student the portion in detail, can I teach uh, better than a uh, uh, computer science uh, teacher who can teach the basics of not the problems of chemistry? That we can handle. But the basics of portion is in any context. There is a facility of computer science department. No, but that's another that. course. You are you started with dissertation, but you have shifted to another course. Computer programming learning is a belongs to another course. No, so uh, what am about? I am I to talk only on dissertation? Yeah. Uh, right no, now. No, 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 no. It's it's uh, including everything. No, no, no. Right now, dissertation is on purpose. Uh, so can you? This is my question. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. Okay, go on, go on. I just reminded you that okay, you are okay. Uh, having a broad and, and, region. Can we take the help of uh, the teachers from other disciplines in the same college for teaching? Now, now, Raka, who will answer this question, right? Uh, are you asking this question to the authority? Then they are not here. Uh, uh, you ask no, the experts. No, the then, question. if you if you are asking the experts okay. like uh, many other uh, many of us, then my answer personally is of course highly yes. Why not? It should be encouraged that interdisciplinary, as I've already mentioned by some of the speakers, I mean, participants. So, I, I think you should go ahead. Okay. Right? Your question is uh, we should develop a computer lab, not only uh, we have distinct circular from university to ready for uh, to be ready for four computers for those same three experiments. But these four, uh, because Fortran uh, programming and executing these sort of programming, Excel, Fortran, this is highly practice oriented. Not only the knowing the theory it will work, 
I have to know the theory and I have to sit be before a computer, I have to go through it. So since we are not allowing and it is not possible to allow the mobile examination, so we have to provide the computer to the student uh, for practice, for sufficient time. Now, who will restrict you? So. Who will restrict you not to have a lab? No, 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 no one will restrict you. No, actually, this is not the purpose of the way we are. This is actually a problem of every college, a computer less, teacher less. Uh, that is uh, no, Dr. Vishal uh, is telling. That's why I think uh, this we can have do uh, depending on the infrastructure of each college. We can do uh, uh, anything, I, I think, uh, uh, because we have talked to uh, principal of the, uh, that college and uh, we should uh, increase our resources like that. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, right, Priyotus, uh, this is an uh, individual yeah. problem of each year. Yeah, actually, uh, infrastructural uh, problem uh, we can discuss. Uh, you have to enhance, uh, we have to go for enhancement of infrastructure. Me also, if uh, I have a problem, I have scarcity, I have to go to the principal, I have to convince. What else we can do? Right? You mean bullet? No, it's a very personal. It's a kind of computer. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dr. Vishesh. Uh, so, I'm, uh, I, I would uh, suggest uh, one person uh, from inorganic, uh, maybe Dr. Shugitu is here from uh, Sirampur College, right? Shugitu is here? Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, Shudhitu, can you uh, say uh, a very few words for uh, this uh, webinar, not for infrastructure, just for webinar, can you say, yes. say something? Are you Bangla? Yes, sure. Yes. I'm the Bangla. Uh, yes. Thank you very much for organizing this webinar. This webinar is organized for this webinar. এত অল্প সময় এতগুলো টপিক কভার করা সত্যিই ডিফিকাল্ট কিন্তু আমরা অনেক কিছু জানতে পেরেছি বিশেষ করে কোথা থেকে কি হবে কতটা পড়ানো উচিত সেই জায়গাগুলো তবে এর পাশাপাশি আমার দুই একটা জিনিস একটু উল্লেখ করা উচিত বলে মনে হয়েছে সেটা হচ্ছে একদিকে যেমন আমরা জানতে পেরেছি যে আমাদের রিসোর্সটা কোথা থেকে আমরা পাবো কোন বইগুলো আমরা ফলো করতে পারি কিন্তু কি পড়াবো তার সঙ্গে সঙ্গে আরও একটা জিনিস ইম্পর্টেন্ট হচ্ছে কতখানি পড়াবো এখন কোর কোর্সের ক্ষেত্রে কতখানি পড়াবো এটা আমাদের খুব একটা সমস্যা হয় না তার কারণ অনেক দিন ধরে আমরা এটা দেখছি এবং আলোচনা করছি কিন্তু যেহেতু এটা একদম কমপ্লিট নতুন তো ফলো তো সেই জায়গায় একটা গাইডলাইন যদি একটা অফিসিয়াল ফোরাম থেকে থাকে তাহলে সুবিধে হয় যেমন আমি উদাহরণ হিসেবে যে কথাটা একটু আগে উঠেছিল এসিসির ক্ষেত্রে আমরা দেখেছি যে বায়োকেমিস্ট্রির যে পার্টটা আছে এমপিতে ছিল সেখানে আমরা হয়তো আমাদের রিসোর্স কিছু আমাদের হাতে ছিল এবং আমরা প্রত্যেক কলেজেই আমরা নিজেদের যতটা আমরা বুঝেছি সেই মতো আমরা স্টুডেন্টদের গাইড করেছি কোনটা পড়া উচিত বা কোনটা নয় কিন্তু দেখতে পাওয়া গেছে যে পরীক্ষায় যখন এসে সেটা অন্য এখন সেটা হতেই পারে কিন্তু যদি একটা ফ্রেম থাকে যে কতটা আমরা বলবো যেহেতু এটা একদম নতুন কয়েক বছর হয়ে গেলে এই প্রবলেমটা হয়তো আর থাকবে না সেটা একটু সুবিধে হতো আরেকটা হচ্ছে যে প্রায় শুরু থেকে ছটা এই ধরনের কোলাবোরেশনে এই ধরনের সেমিনার অ্যাটেন্ড করে ওয়ার্কশপ অ্যাটেন্ড করে ফেললাম প্রথম চারটে ছিল ফিজিক্যালি আর পরের লাস্টে দুটো এই ওই ধরনের ওয়েবিনার তো আর একটা জিনিস আমার মনে হয়েছে যে কিছু কিছু আলোচনা আমরা এখানে করছি এবং একটা ইম্প্রেশন আমাদের থাকে যে যেহেতু ইউজিবিএস এর সঙ্গে কোলাবোরেশন এগুলো হচ্ছে ফলত এখানে যেগুলো মোটামুটি আমরা ডিসিশনের পর্যায়ে পৌঁছুচ্ছি সেগুলো হয়তো পরবর্তীকালে কিছুটা মানে থ্রু থ্রু হবে যেমন আমি একটা উদাহরণ হিসেবে দুটো জিনিস বলি যেমন এর আগে আশুতোষ কলেজে যে আমাদের ওয়ার্কশপটা হয়েছিল সেখানে ইনঅর্গানিক কেমিস্ট্রি পার্সপেকটিভ আমরা জেনারেল প্র্যাকটিক্যাল এর রেসপেক্টে একটা ডিসিশন নিয়েছিলাম যে ডিসিশন মানে আমরা সেখানে একটা প্রস্তাব রেখেছিলাম যে আমাদের জেনারেল যে আননোন প্র্যাকটিক্যাল সেখানে যেমন ছটা লিখলেই হবে এই সরি চারটে লিখলেই আমাদের হবে এবং আমরা সেই বিষয়ে একটা এগোচ্ছিলাম পরীক্ষাতেও ছেলেদের সেইভাবে ইনস্ট্রাকশন দিয়েছিলাম কিন্তু পরে দেখা গেল যে পরীক্ষার সময় ছটা আননি লিখতে হবে তো এইগুলো একটা প্রবলেম ক্রিয়েট করে এখন আমার যেটা মনে হয়েছে যে এই ধরনের আহ ওয়ার্কশপ গুলো যেগুলো আলোচনা হচ্ছে সেগুলো ফলো আপটার ব্যাপারে যদি একটুখানি দেখা হয় আরো একটা উদাহরণ দিই যেমন একদম প্রথম যে বাসন্তী দেবী কলেজে একটা প্র্যাকটিক্যাল ওরিয়েন্টেড আমাদের ওয়ার্কশপ হয়েছিল 
সেখানে আমাদের ওই পরীক্ষা নতুন সিস্টেমে তিন ঘন্টায় কি করে নেওয়া হবে সেই বিষয়ে একটা ডিসিশন এবং বলা হয় যে ওই ফিজিক্যাল ইনঅর্গানিক অর্গানিক সেমিস্টার 1 এ তিনটার মধ্যে যে কোনো দুটো লটারি করে হবে এইভাবে একটা এগোনো হবে এবং আমরা সেটা সেইভাবেই স্টুডেন্টদের জানাই পরবর্তীতে সেটা চেঞ্জ হয় এই লাস্ট ইয়ারে এসে সেটাও অ্যাকসেপ্টেবল কোনো জিনিস চেঞ্জ হতেই পারে কিন্তু সেই যে চেঞ্জটা সেটা আমরা আনঅফিশিয়ালি কিছুটা জানতে পেরে আমরা সেন্ট পলস কলেজে যে ওয়ার্কশপটা হয় সেখানে আমরা একটা প্রপোজালটি যে সেটা যদি অফিশিয়ালি একটা জানানো হয় স্টুডেন্টদের কারণ না হলে পরীক্ষার আগে তাদেরকে হঠাৎ করে বলা হলে সেটা একটু মুশকিল কারণ সবাই তো জানতে পারছে না যে কি হচ্ছে না হচ্ছে কিন্তু সেই ধরনের কোনো আমাদের কিছু আসেনি ফলত স্টুডেন্টরা ওই পরীক্ষার যখন নোটিস বের হয় তখনই তারা জানতে পারে যে পরীক্ষার মানে মডালিটিসটা চেঞ্জ হচ্ছে তাদের দু ঘন্টা এক একটা করে দিতে হবে ফিজিক্যাল ইনঅর্গানিক অর্গানিক তিনটে পরীক্ষাই দিতে হবে তো এই জায়গাগুলো যেগুলো আলোচনা হচ্ছে যেমন আজকে ডিজার্টেশনের রেসপেক্টে অনেকগুলো প্রপোজাল এলো সেইগুলোই থাকছে কিনা সেগুলোর ব্যাপারে একটা যেন মানে কিছু একটা রিটার্ন রাইট আপ একটা অফিসিয়াল কিছু একটা আমাদের গাইডলাইন্স আসে বলতে পারি যে এটাই হচ্ছে এটা চেঞ্জ হচ্ছে না বা হলো আর একটা নতুন নোটিফিকেশন আসবে এবং মানে শুরু হয়ে যাওয়ার পর মাঝ পথে যেন নয় তাহলে সেক্ষেত্রে কিন্তু আগে থেকে জানলে আমি এটা নিতাম না তো সেই জায়গাগুলো একটু দেখলে ভালো হয় এবং আরো কয়েকটা জিনিস যেগুলো হয়তো এখানে আলোচনা করা গেল না সম্ভব ছিল না যেমন কালকে অরুণাবোধক কালকে ট্রাইডলি বলেছিলেন যে দু ঘন্টায় কি করে প্র্যাকটিক্যাল গুলো করা যাবে হয়তো এবছরই বা এই সেমিস্টারেই লাগছে না বলে হয়তো আপাতত অ্যাভয়েড আমরা করে যেতে পারছি যা সিচুয়েশন হচ্ছে কিন্তু পরবর্তীকালে তো কোনো না কোনো সময় লাগবেই তো সেই জায়গাগুলো কিছুটা আনঅ্যাটেন্ডেড রয়ে গেল তো সেগুলোর ব্যাপারেও আলোচনা যদি একটু হয় তাহলে হয়তো ভালো হতো I think Shudipta is very much right. Actually, uh, this is the first discussion regarding DSC. Uh, and uh, so, if we can initiate, we must propagate. I think so. Uh, no termination right now. Uh, so, if initiation is there, so there should be propagation. And uh, during this propagation process, actually, uh, we have nothing. The main thing com is coming from UGBOS members. Ankul is uh, uh, here right now. and onkul is um, uh, always with us uh, uh, for this webinar uh, i think um, uh, when uh, the process of evaluation will come that is uh, paper setters uh, moderators uh, head examiners and uh, 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 type of practitioners uh, all uh, all system uh, they are uh, are linked with uh, ugbos members uh, so uh, um, i'm pretty sure Uh, Ankur can uh, take uh, some responsibility as uh, we have gone through this uh, webinar and uh, uh, every study material uh, will upload uh, and uh, we have also requested all resource persons to prepare some model questions for us so that we can circulate among uh, all colleges or college teachers. but one responsibility i think onkon should take and uh, surely uh, he will take that, that uh, this message this message of webinar uh, should uh, be conveyed uh, to the proper place actually to the setters to the moderators to the ag uh, so prepare some uh, uh, to prepare some uh, according to shudipto Uh, some guidelines uh, i don't say guidelines uh, to prepare some notes before going through evaluation is very important so that uh, this webinar will have no value actually uh, that is uh, our request to onkul as our representative of uh, eg bos uh, uh, you will uh, uh, look uh, after this matter i have nothing to do if you, if uh, onkul uh, uh, really uh, অংকন
main basic points of Sudipta mentioned and many other points. And then yeah. hand it over to Hong Kong, then Hong Kong will have a review. And then uh, addition and subtraction after there, Hong Kong will, uh, I, I think in principle Hong Kong will have no objection to convey to the Board of Studies. So, but you please help that, him. You please help him. That is the part okay. of our job as organizer. Okay. We will do okay. that, okay. that definitely. And we will uh, okay. just uh, send it to Hong Kong. And uh, the next propagation or next process uh, should be done by Hong Kong. And I am sure you will do that. Uh, this is our expectation. Uh, another thing, uh, as Shrudipto said, in Ashutosh College, there was a webinar. I am sorry, there was a seminar. But uh, Shudipto, for your information, that was not uh, in, in, uh, including general part. We did not de do anything on general. We just did on honors courses. That's why the general was not actually uh, discussed elaborately in that seminar. That is the point. Uh, Another important point I want to focus uh, uh, to you uh, that ACC part there was no uh, not any kind of training seminar uh, so we are suffered better we uh, should say students suffered a lot that's why we are putting a webinar uh, on probably Ajanta should uh, um, fix the date 24th and 25th August uh, uh, including ACC five. SCC uh, A and SSC uh, B part that is pharmaceutical chemistry because in the chat box I am when I am looking somebody is writing that what about pharmaceutical chemistry we don't have pharmaceutical chemistry in same five and same six we have that in same three and same four and for this century and same four SCC syllabus we are going to organize webinar for the sake of ourselves for the sake of students and uh, two days webinar we are uh, doing one on SSC uh, A part that is uh, uh, so for uh, I think uh, mathematics and statics for a uh, chemist and uh, analytical clinical biochemistry one day yeah. and uh, right Ankur I am and the following day is pharmaceutical chemistry and pesticide chemistry. I think we will be uh, on the same platform after a few days. Uh, uh, okay, one, uh, one thing before valedictory session, it is almost 5.30 and everybody is leaving the meeting. Uh, so, Ajunta, is there anybody, uh, should we call anybody uh, for uh, the, uh, this uh, um, uh, sharing the uh, feelings of uh, Hello, uh, I, I, yes, uh, actually I cannot see uh, anyone outside the uh, CU, so I think we, uh, we can proceed. Then should we go to the valedictory session? So I um, hand over the charge to you for uh, valedictory session. Okay, Ajanta? Uh, yes. Uh, okay, okay. Actually, thank you. Everybody, need, uh, actually, yeah. hello, everybody. So Ajanta, please. Carry. Ajanta, please carry on. Okay, so we are at the extreme uh, end of uh, our four day webinar and everyone is uh, enriched but at the same time feeling very tired, I know. So we will proceed to the vote of thanks because in the valedictory session actually we wanted all the uh, feedback from the teachers and uh, I think we will directly proceed to the vote of thanks and I would like to request the head of the Department of Chemistry of Moulana Azad College, Dr. Ashish Kumar Mukherjee to present the vote of thanks and concluding remarks. Sir? Thank you. Have you listened to me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, thank you. Dear distinguished guests and speakers, Jesus person, participants of the webinar, Professor of both Maulana Ajat and Ashutosh College, Calcutta. Lastly, we have come to the end of the fourth day national webinar on discipline specific elective topics of UG Chemistry Honors, CVCS syllabus of University of Calcutta. Good introductions have been made among renowned research persons and the participants through these days and hope all have made themselves enriched with such interactions as well as suggestions of speakers. 
we are very much thankful to Professor Chaitanya Mukhopadhyay, Chairman, UG Board of Studies of Chemistry, University of Calcutta, for supervising the entire program and for providing valuable advice time to time. Otherwise, such program cannot be presented properly. Endless thanks to be given to all speakers, resource persons. Dr. Subhro Ghosto Sridhar, Dr. Ankur Sannal, Dr. Dibankar Chattopadhyay, Dr. Sanchita Goswami, Dr. Kamalika Sen, Dr. Sanjay Bhar, Dr. Priyotas Dattu, Dr. Chandan Kumar Pal for their tireless effort in providing resource material and all kinds of support to the teachers. We are grateful to the members of organizing committee, Principal Mulana Ajad College, Vice Principal Asutosh College, and IQSC coordinators of both colleges for their valuable help to organize such webinars. We praise the active participation of all executive committee members with special thanks to Dr. Shubhadeep Samanto, Dr. Orijit Kundu of Chemistry Department, and Dr. Official Ghosh of Microbiology Department for providing all technical expertise and support. We are thankful to all faculty members of Chemistry Department of both Mola Najad and Ashutosh College. All advisory committee members and all coordinators of the question and answer sessions. Thanks to all the participants joining from the different parts of the country for their active participation and support so as to enable us to make it a successful national webinar. <laughs> Lastly, thanks to be given to the joint conveners, Dr. Kya Ghosh, head of the Department of Chemistry, Ashutosh College, and Dr. Ajanta Mukherjee, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry of Molana Ajit College, for their continuous active effort for the successful completion of the webinar. Thanks to all. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you. I think uh, we shall conclude our four day national webinar. A big thank you to all the participants. Thank you, everyone. Be visible, be visible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For being with us for four days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.